My name is Al Strober. I am a retired orthopedic surgeon. I am now almost 72 years old. It starts back in 2005. I noticed a lump in my neck, and it turned out to be non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was about 58 years old at that time, the same age as my paternal uncle, who also had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was much luckier than he in that the modern treatment made it go away, and I was able to return to work and everything else. About three years later, uh, another lymph node showed up. So we went back to his office to find out what the directions are. And he said, the, the good news, it's not lymphoma. The bad news, it's melanoma. We went ahead with a pretty large operation at UCLA Medical Center for removal of the original problem and examination of lymph nodes. My surgeon said 23 out of 27 lymph nodes that were removed were positive. He had never seen anything that widespread already. After the radiation treatments, and this would have been the spring of 2010, it began the first of the chemotherapies, interferon. It made no difference at all for the tumor and only produced nausea and basically flu-like symptoms. We stopped that in the fall of 2010, and the tumor continued to get wider spread and bigger. I lost about 40 pounds. I was very sick. I spent 18 to 19 hours a day in bed. Fluid build up got in the way of breathing, and I developed night shortness of breath, resulting in having to go to the hospital a few times to have fluid drawn off my lungs so I could breathe. It had been more than a year since the original diagnosis, and it was just it continued to get worse inexorably without stopping it at all. And with so little hope on the horizon, we decided to ask our kids who were at school working on their graduate programs to come home and basically have the chance to say goodbye. In the January of 2011, my UCLA oncologist said there's a drug out there that may help. And it was in the spring of 2011, ipilimumab was released by the FDA. A few weeks later began the treatments. Just around the second dose uh, after that, around Father's Day of 2011, something changed. Two things we noticed was that the amount of fluid we could take off to the lungs every day started going down for the first time. And a large bump on my right shoulder, which was threatening to erupt because it was so tense, actually got dull and started to go down in size, something we could actually see. Two days later, it was much better. And by the third injection, it was stop taking the fluid off my lungs. I didn't have to do that anymore. A week and a half later, I'm getting better. I'm not going to die. How do you deal with that? Now you establish this other new bond and relationship with your kids that comes at a very high expense. And all of a sudden you get your money back, literally getting on with life. That was hugely memorable, a very big deal. But uh, I was able to go home uh, after that. The next scan showed just what I felt. I was doing fine. I could sleep, I could walk, I could do everything else. And the only problem is that that special tube that they put in my lung they had never taken one out because everyone who had it had died before. Three doses and basically no other treatment since then. It's now been nine years and there's no sign of disease. Let me say this about funding for continuing research. You keep on hearing about the aha moment when things were suddenly come together. That is rare. It really was a whole generation from the idea of the T-cell lymphocyte back there in the 60s to something that was actually therapeutically useful and saved my life. And if we don't make that investment, if we don't make those big efforts here and now, we're not going to see the benefits 10, 20, and 40 years from now. Our kids will not have the same benefit that I have from my parents' investment in the future.